Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to the library tour of Doom. This is a tour through my entire library, book by book. Not only the books on my shelves, but the books on my iPad and my Kindle, and the books in my book journal, the books that I had but no longer have. <laughs> so this is going to take a while. I really shouldn't take any days off. I did, but I shouldn't. Uh, and today we are going back to, what is it, the 1970s? 1978. Uh, this is a volume from Oxford University Press. This is History and Ovid by Ronald Sim. Uh, and a very bare bones edition, no falderall, no no quotes, no summaries, no nothing like that. Uh, from an author who in Roman history circles is very famous. Uh, Ronald Sim wrote a book called The Roman Revolution that is a, a masterpiece of Roman history writing, belongs on the same shelf with uh, Momsen or uh, Gibbon or Oh, what not? Oh, all, it, it's a great work of Roman history. Um, Sim was a, a don. He was deeply steeped in the classical world. And he wrote a lot of books throughout his life. Uh, and when you see, if you see, a uh, paperback, I believe Oxford has, for a long time did a, a paperback of the Roman Revolution. When you see something like that, it won't look anything like this. It'll have the normal cover. It'll have a blurb on the front. It'll have a bunch of blurbs on the back. It'll have a description on the back. This doesn't have any of that. This is a series of papers, a series of chapters studying not just the title, History in Ovid. Ovid was a, was a Roman poet, who, but not a Virgil-style uh, poet. He, was, he, he did a lot of stuff that, had, that was fanciful, allegorical, mythological. Uh, and Sim's idea in this book is to sift him for what history he might reveal, for the lights he might throw on the history that he lived through, including his own history, including uh, the, the enduring mystery of why Ovid was exiled from Rome and never brought back. He died in exile. Sim actually has a theory about that that is the, the crowning chapter of this book. Uh, and whether you agree with it or not, um, it's fascinating to do that. Now, in order to sift through Ovid's work, in order to find how much historical resonances are in there, Sim has to do a little shifting around in terms of the traditionally understood, traditionally accepted dating of a lot of Ovid's poems and poem cycles. And that in itself is fascinating. You know, when a heavyweight scholar like this says it, it may be necessary to redate some work that has had a standard, more or less accepted date for a long time, that in itself is fascinating. And you might be, you might be listening to me and thinking, okay, well, why does it sound like you're working your way up to a but? And I am. I am. Uh, I have often said on this channel, and now this is not this is not something that readers like to hear. It's not something I like to say, because it can be taken wrong. It can be interpreted so poorly. Those of you who read history, uh, whether you did it for school, whether you do it for a vocation, whether you do it just for fun, those of you who read history will know what I'm talking about when I say that it comes in levels of proficiency. We don't like to think that. We like to think, you know, if I can read, then all reading is is an equal field to me. I don't know why we do that. Uh, especially when it comes to things like history uh, or even fiction. God forbid. God forbid you bring this up when it comes to fiction. But I don't know why we do that when we have no problem accepting that there are levels of proficiency when reading something like physics or math. I don't understand why people think that would be any different with any other discipline. Nevertheless, it's true that there are levels of proficiency. There's just no way around that. It's not meant to be snobbish or condescending or dismissive. It just is true. Some historians are writing for other historians, or graduate students, or adepts in the subject. People already know it very well, so that their writing in, for instance, this book, really verges on being monographs. It really verges on being very specific things that are not aimed at a general audience. Uh, that can happen in any historical field. That does not have to be ancient Rome or ancient Greece. Even Amer studies of the American Revolution can easily be advanced level history. I hate to put it that way, but there's as good a way as any. At least I'm hoping that the people who are watching this video, if you've watched any other videos, know that there's no condescension involved here. I'm not I'm not being a snob, even though I am saying that there, there aren't many levels of history writing that I can't handle. But it's only because I've been doing it forever. I've been, I've been reading and pursuing this stuff for a long time. Um, Sim is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Even his most accessible book, his most accessible book is his greatest book, The Roman Revolution. Even his most accessible book is not all that accessible. And something like this, 
as wonderful as I find it, just invigorating to go to and return to, something like this, you could have all the history, all the interest that you want in ancient Rome or Ovid or the Caesar Augustus or whatever. It's not going to help you much in here. Sim is often, he often alludes to make his major points. His, his conclusions in a paragraph or a whole essay are allusions to some piece of writing, which can only barely be sketched, even in the footnotes. You've just basically got to know what he's talking about. And if you don't, then you don't. The, the, the text offers you no help at all. Long stretches in this book. The prose will just be singingly wonderful. Sim has a very odd prose style, very odd, uh, I would almost say studiedly odd cadence to his writing. There's no one that writes quite like him. If you take his name off a, a protracted piece of, of work, you'll know that it's his. By the way, by the, by the cadence of his sentences, the the long ones, the short ones, the the odd curlicue phrasings in them. Hard to describe, but in, absolutely uh, unmistakable. Um, and there'll be long stretches in here where you'll be reading, I'll be reading and thinking, boy, oh boy, this is just so good. Uh, thinking about sources just doesn't get any better than this. And I'll look back at, at, at the, the passage that I just read and realize how many of those lines were in Latin or in Greek, untranslated. And with no translations in the, in the footnotes either, I don't know that Oxford would write a book, would, would allow a book like this to go into print now. I think even if for the specialist press, they would probably include translations, but Sim didn't. He, he just doesn't bother. If, if, if he raises a subject about person A in connection with person B, person C, who is well known to be connected with them in the anecdotal literature that he's referring to, will never be named, but the person C is all over the discussion. There's no way you will get anything out of it if you don't know that connection. You need to know what he's talking about to know what he's talking about. And it's not just Sim. I'm not just picking on him. All kinds of historians write at this level. Fewer now, I think, than ever before, uh, just because there's less money. And so these things are less underwritten. They're less entitled. It's more and more necessary, even for scholars as steep as Ronald Sim, to reach an audience. And you can't reach an audience if you're writing like that. This is advanced level history. It's wonderful, but I, people say, you know, uh, I see, I've had guests over here over the years see, find this on my shelf and say, oh, I know you really like Ovid, and I know you really like Ronald Sim. Is this good? What am I supposed to say in response to that? Yeah, it's brilliant, but don't bother. You know, you've read almost no history, you read other things. You put your attention elsewhere, just like if you poured your attention into supply-side economics or um, the, the theory of acoustics or whatever. If you pour your attention in there, then you are going to start to read on levels that a, a beginner can't read. Same is true here. I, if you have read a lot in Roman history, then I, I can recommend this book. You're, you're really going to like it. I don't know many people who have. Uh, I don't know many people that I right now in my life who could pick this book up and really get much out of it. Uh, and the, the whole of this just sounds so elitist and it isn't meant to be. It isn't meant to be at all. I would say the same thing about a book that I was locked out of. I would say the same thing about a great work of physics or mathematics that I, you know, was on that advanced level on the subject, but had left me long behind so that I was one of the excluded. Uh, I love this book. I really do. I love all of Ronald Sam. I don't have all of them, uh, but I really like his Roman studies. Uh, I know that I should say that uh, the Roman Revolution, which we will get to on this library tour, I know that I should say that it's my favorite of his books, but he did a two-volume study of Tacitus that is hands down my favorite thing from him, and we will get to that on the library tour of Doom. For today, we have a little book on, on finding history in the works of a poet. A very elusive poet, a very grounded poet, a poet who very much wanted to talk about current events and family histories. So it's not like he was a stranger to it, but still fascinating to watch what Sim will do with sources that you just don't see coming. You'll be reading a chapter of his and you will think, okay, where did you get this? And you'll realize that he'd found it in some source that you would never have connected with the subject matter. And yet it seems watertight, just thrilling in a way that I, I'm finding it hard to describe, but it's just thrilling to see when it's done at this level. Um, so that's your, your library tour of Doom book for today. I think we're
probably up for something more common and popular. We'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry about this. This is a bit of a nerdy indulgence on my part. Uh, but I'll wrap this up. I'll wrap this up for now. But I'll see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.